I was in shock when during a meal at a restaurant, I heard the voice of my cheating wife and her AP. Hey Reddit, posting this on my anonymous account because my main account is followed by my wife and friends. I'm feeling utterly shaken and not sure how to process everything that's happened. I've just experienced the most shocking revelation of my life and it's rocked the foundation of what I thought was a happy marriage. A part of me wants to believe I'm overreacting, but deep down, I can't deny what I saw. My name is Nathan, and I'm a 32-year-old guy. My wife, Samantha, is 30. We've been married for three years, and up until now, I thought everything was picture perfect. Samantha and I go way back. We've been together since high school. Our relationship felt like a fairy tale. Date nights, romance, a vibrant sex life. I had a well-paying job that allowed Samantha to stay at home. A choice she made as she believes in traditional gender roles. She says it's the man's job to provide. She handles the household, something which she can't even do. And I take care of the finances. But I've always had to be there to lend a hand because she always needs it. Despite my busy schedule at work, I prioritized our relationship and made sure to be present for Samantha. Admittedly, Samantha always had her challenges. But I've always turned a blind eye thinking it was just part of our journey together. Samantha's idea of traditional roles sounded good, but in reality, she hardly lifted a finger around the house. I'd come home tired from work, only to start cleaning and doing chores. It was frustrating, given how busy and stressed my job kept me. Talking to her about this was like talking to a wall. Apart from the chores, Samantha had a knack for pushing people away. She was rude and would turn on friends at the drop of a hat. Her friendships never lasted, mainly because she couldn't keep up the facade for long. She also had this habit of never admitting when she was wrong. It was always someone else's fault, never hers. Living with her meant dealing with her mood swings and explosive anger. Any little thing could set her off, and it made being at home feel like walking through a minefield. I tried to overlook these issues because I loved her, but they had been eating away at me and taking a toll on my mental health. Did I also mention Samantha's weight was a constant issue, and it was a sore point in our relationship. She struggled with her weight, but her eating habits only made things worse. She would indulge in large portions of food and was always saying she wanted to start dieting but never following through. This led to her being overweight and she would get upset with herself, blaming me or others for her appearance. She became jealous of my friendships and would isolate me from my friends, claiming they would judge her for her weight. This was far from true, but she used it as an excuse to keep me at home. When I suggested healthier habits like smaller portions or going to the gym together, she would react explosively, accusing me of finding her unattractive. It was a very frustrating cycle of her pushing me away and then blaming me for not being there for her. Another issue was navigating Samantha's insecurities. It was like walking on thin ice. I tried to boost her confidence by complimenting her regularly, but it often backfired. She would accuse me of being sarcastic or indirectly mocking her, leaving me feeling confused and hurt. On the occasions when I didn't compliment her, she would lash out claiming I found her unattractive. Her insecurity extended to social situations too. She would refuse to join me for meals or outings and would say she was scared of being judged by others. Yet when I went out alone and returned, she would explode, accusing me of leaving her behind because I was ashamed of her. Despite these challenges, I pushed because I loved her deeply. I overlooked so much trying to understand and support her, but now I realize how much I sacrificed and how much it cost me emotionally. Navigating Samantha's social life and health struggles was like walking through a minefield. I tried everything to help her make and maintain new friendships, but it always ended in disaster. Her friends would eventually see her true colors and cut ties with her. I even went to the extent of apologizing on her behalf to salvage her friendships, but it was futile. Whenever I attempted to help her lose weight, it felt like hitting a brick wall. Despite all my encouragement and efforts to get her to the gym, she remained resistant. Even on the rare occasions when she agreed to come with me, her lack of commitment was pretty evident. She would barely exercise and spent most of her time watching people, which literally defeats the purpose of coming to a gym in the first place. Her insecurities also led to me cutting off many of my friends. She wasn't comfortable with me having a social life outside of her, and it strained our relationship. She said if she couldn't have any friends, then I too couldn't have any. My family relationship suffered too. Samantha was always reluctant to engage with them during holidays or visits, and that led to them distancing themselves. Whenever my family would come visit, she would throw a tantrum and complain so much that it was pretty obvious she didn't want them there, so they distanced themselves. When I would go visit my family, she would refuse to come with me, and would then throw a tantrum if I insisted on going without her. 
It was very frustrating to see her push away people who cared about us. Her behavior towards my family especially was pretty crazy. She tried to isolate me from them, claiming that she and our future children were my only family. This created tension and further strained our relationship. Her own family had distanced themselves from her due to her behavior. Nobody wanted to talk to her. They were all either no contact or low contact. Even her mom, dad, and her siblings, but still yet she refused to take responsibility and instead blamed them for the rifts. Samantha's constant nagging about my job added to the tension. It's like she forgot that my job paid for everything, including her endless shopping sprees. When she started cheating, there were signs I should have noticed. She was always glued to her phone, laughing and chatting like she never did with me. It felt like she found more joy in her virtual life than in ours. Her excuses about being on her phone didn't add up. She'd say she was watching videos or scrolling through social media, but I knew there was more to it. I just didn't want to face the truth because I wanted to believe our marriage was solid. Looking back, I realize I should have trusted my instincts and seen through her lies. I realize how naive I was to trust her explanations blindly. It's painful to acknowledge that I ignored the signs because I wanted to believe in the facade of our perfect marriage. Despite my best efforts to connect with Samantha, it felt like hitting a brick wall. She became more distant, and no matter what I did, it seemed futile. It felt like I was living with a stranger, not the woman I had married. No matter how much I tried to overcompensate by being affectionate, attentive, and understanding, nothing seemed to bridge the growing gap between us. Our conversations became shallow and awkward. I tried everything from surprise dates to thoughtful gestures, but it was like pouring water into a leaky bucket. It was like trying to light a fire in the pouring rain. Nothing I did seemed to penetrate the wall she had built around herself. She was lost in her own world, disconnected from us. I'd suggest therapy or try to engage her in meaningful talks, but she'd either deflect or give vague responses. It was frustrating and heartbreaking that no matter how much love and effort I poured into our relationship, it couldn't fix what was already broken. Samantha had emotionally checked out. Mind you, during this time I was totally lost. I felt like I was in some messed up puzzle without a clear solution. I kept asking myself, what did I do wrong? Was it my crazy hours at work? Did I ignore her too much? It was like my brain was on a loop replaying every detail, hoping to find the answer because I genuinely thought that I was the one at fault. I thought I had done something to Samantha and that was what had made her so angry she had checked out of the relationship. Like I said, I tried talking to Samantha, but it was like talking to a wall. I'd spill my guts and she'd just sit there, distant and detached. I tried to have a heart to heart, thinking maybe we could fix things, but it only made matters worse. Then she started leaving the house a lot. She told me she wanted to take up walking and exercising because she was serious about losing weight now. At first I was happy for her, but then I realized that it was oddly very suspicious. She'd disappear for hours, claiming she was out for a walk or some exercise kick. And when I would try and check her location, she had either turned it off or it would show that she was in a particular location and wasn't moving. Then when I would try to call her, she wouldn't pick up or she would tell me that she had just stopped to grab something real quick. I wanted to support her, but deep down, I sensed something wasn't right. Her behavior got sketchier by the day. She was still always glued to her phone, but dodging my questions with weak excuses. I wanted to believe her, trust her, but my gut told me otherwise. Those long walks of hers seemed more like cover-ups and her disappearing acts only added to my suspicions. It was a very rough ride. I felt like I was being played, but not having the proof to confront her. And every time I mustered the courage to confront Samantha, it turned into a battle of accusations. She'd flip the script, painting me as the bad guy. Suddenly I wasn't supportive enough. I was holding her back from becoming her best self. She claimed I was afraid of her getting attention from other guys, calling me insecure. Her favorite move was making me doubt my own sanity. Checking my location all the time? That's not normal, Nathan, she'd say with that condescending tone that I hated. It felt like I was losing grip on reality and I started questioning if I was indeed crossing boundaries. I tried to explain that my concerns were valid, that her behavior was raising red flags, but she'd deflect everything. It was like arguing with a master manipulator. She'd twist my words, make me doubt myself, and leave me feeling like I was the one at fault. It was a mind game I couldn't win and it left me frustrated and even more confused about what was really going on. It had been a pretty standard day at work, nothing out of the ordinary. One of my coworkers, John, suggested we grab dinner together. I was up for it, thinking it would be a nice break from the routine. Little did I know that evening would shatter my world. Before leaving for dinner, I received a text from Samantha. 
She mentioned she was out for a long walk, enjoying the fresh air and sunshine, that's what she called it, low alp. Her message hinted that I might not find her at home when I returned, which was normal for me whenever I went out. I remember consciously deciding not to check her location this time. It felt like I was invading her privacy, and I trusted her words. Looking back, maybe I should have listened to my gut. At the restaurant, we settled into a cozy corner table, exchanging stories and catching up on work gossip. Everything seemed normal until I heard it, the laughter that instantly froze me in place. It was Samantha's laughter, unmistakably hers. That laughter so distinct and familiar. I couldn't mistake it for anyone else's. She was here in this restaurant, not on a casual walk as she had claimed. Samantha was here having a great time with some guy completely wrapped up in their little world of jokes and shared moments. Part of me wished it was all a dream, something my mind cooked up. But life isn't that kind. There she was, oblivious to my presence, enjoying herself with someone else. I struggled with what to do. Should I confront her right there in front of everyone or wait until we were alone? Making a scene in front of my coworkers didn't seem smart, especially since I didn't know who this guy was to her. I also didn't want to be the next hot topic at work. I watched them discreetly, trying to figure out what was going on. It quickly became clear they were more than just pals. The way they interacted, the way they touched, it was obvious they were romantically involved. It was painful, I felt betrayed, embarrassed, and infuriated. What hurt the most was knowing she used my hard-earned cash to pay for their little romantic dinner. It felt like a punch in the gut. I couldn't fathom how she could be so thoughtless, using our shared money to bankroll her dates with this guy. I was working my ass off to provide for her and she was throwing it away at some guy. By the time I left the restaurant, I was a whirlwind of emotions. When I got home, part of me hoped she'd have some explanation, but she wasn't even home. I, I went to our living room and slumped on the couch, totally drained. All I wanted was for Samantha not to walk through that door tonight. I am tempted to toss her stuff out, kick her out of my life, but I know it isn't that simple. Without concrete proof, I'd be shooting myself in the foot legally. I need solid evidence of her cheating, not just suspicions. If I confront her now, it could backfire big time. The last thing I want is for her to get a good chunk of our assets in a divorce settlement because I acted rashly. The legal side of things is like a minefield. Cheating in our state is a big deal, but proving it is another story. I have to be strategic, patient, and wait for the right moment to strike. Also, I must admit questions are racing through my mind. How did she even pull off cheating? Was she bringing guys into our home or sneaking off elsewhere? The mere thought makes my blood boil. So for now, I have to play the oblivious husband. Act like everything is normal when it is anything but. I have to pretend as if I didn't just catch her cheating on me, having dinner with some guy at a restaurant with my money. It's ironic, every time I invited her out with me, she would refuse, but there she was outside with that guy. It is eating me up inside, but I have to keep a lid on it until I have concrete evidence. That's why I have turned to Reddit. It's my only outlet, a place where I can vent without consequences and seek advice from others who might have been through similar hell. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been about 12 hours since I made that last post and I gotta say I didn't expect it to blow up like it did. I'm kind of relieved my wife isn't into Reddit or social media. Otherwise, stumbling upon this post would have been a nightmare. She's always been against social media. That's another reason which made her sudden interest in her phone a red flag for me. Anyway, I'm grateful for all the supportive comments and DMs. It's been a real boost knowing I'm not alone in this mess. So she came back home acting distant as usual, straight to her room, glued to her phone. I'm tempted to snoop around, see if I can dig up any info on the guy she was with. But truth be told, I'm flying blind here. I don't even know his name, just his face. I might have to resort to checking her phone, although I'm not proud of it. I'm just desperate for answers at this point. I've decided to take drastic measures and install cameras throughout the house. She won't know about it. It's my insurance in case things go south. I know it sounds sneaky, but I need solid proof for the court, especially since cheating is a big deal here. It's frustrating dealing with all this deceit, but I'm trying to stay one step ahead. Thanks again for all the support and advice. I really appreciate it. I did not even expect it. I just thought this was going to be a rant and shit post that people wouldn't even interact with, so I'm genuinely surprised by the love that I'm getting on here. It's given me a sense of direction in this chaotic situation. I'll keep you all updated as things unfold. Update. Hey everyone, it's Nathan here with a quick and surprising update. So, I went ahead and checked my wife's phone like I mentioned last time. Guess what? His number was saved under his full name. Talk about bold moves, right? Maybe she thought it would throw me off if I ever decided to snoop. But hey, it made my job easier. I did a quick Facebook search using his full name and there he was. 
engaged to someone else. Yep, engaged. It adds a whole new layer of confusion to this mess. I can't wrap my head around why he'd cheat if he's already committed to someone else. So I did what any person in my shoes would do. I reached out to his fiance. Her Facebook profile confirmed their engagement with loads of tagged posts and pictures together. I sent her a message explaining that I had something important to discuss and suggested meeting in person. Surprisingly, she accepted. I'm gearing up to meet her now and I just wanted to keep you all in the loop. I'll be back with another update once I've spoken to her and something significant unfolds. Thanks. Update. Hey Reddit, it's Nathan back with a major update after about two weeks. So remember how I mentioned reaching out to Troy's fiance and that I would update y'all on how the meeting went? Well, I decided against updating. Instead, I wanted to wait for something significant to happen before updating you all. And boy, did something significant happen. Let me start with the cameras I installed. It didn't even take three days for them to pay off. I discovered that my wife had been bringing Troy over to the house whenever I was out for work. Can you believe it? He acted like he owned the place, played games on my PS, slept with my wife in our bed, and disrespected me. They even had the audacity to make jokes, mocking me, and crazier still, mocking his own fiancé. It's beyond belief. Now I have all the evidence I need. I'm kicking my wife out as soon as I can. As for Troy's fiancé, thankfully, she listened to me. When I explained everything to her, she was shocked and devastated. She poured her heart out, telling me how much she loved Troy and how they had been together since high school. It was heartbreaking to hear how much she invested in their relationship, only to have it shattered. She cried a lot and I felt terrible for her. She mentioned the wedding plans and how uncertain everything was now. It turns out Troy is broke, adding insult to injury so she had been the one paying for most of the stuff for their wedding. I tried my best to console her and we ended up bonding over the situation. She's a really nice and cool person and we decided to stay in touch. It's a really wild time for me, but at least I've made progress and found someone who understands what I've been through. Thanks for all the support and messages. It means a lot during these tough times. Update. Hey Reddit, it's Nathan back with another one of my crazy updates. So as I mentioned before, I had enough evidence of Samantha's cheating and I decided it was time to kick her out. Let me tell you, it was a wild ride, not for the faint-hearted. I initially tried to keep calm, but I knew Samantha's tendencies to throw tantrums and get aggressive, so I followed the advice of many of you and had two friends with me for support. She was taken aback when she saw my friends because she had successfully isolated me from most people, including them. With my friends by my side, I confronted her and demanded that she leave. Her initial reaction was disbelief, almost as if she thought it was a joke. When I got serious and mentioned Troy, her demeanor changed. Instead of remorse, she tried crocodile tears and excuses. She even had the audacity to say it was a mistake. I called out her lies and that's when she turned angry. She started blaming me, saying Troy was exciting while I was too lovey-dovey and too romantic. Can you believe that? I never even knew that was an issue. Things escalated quickly. She refused to leave, claiming she had nowhere to go and wouldn't be homeless. I had reached my limit. I started throwing her belongings out onto the porch, loading up her clothes. She ran out to grab them and I seized the opportunity to lock her out. The shouting and banging on the door were insane. I had to toss her shoes out the window to avoid opening the door and risking her forcing her way back in. After about half an hour of chaos, she left without her things. I was relieved to have her out and I immediately decided to change the locks for safety. My friends were shocked at her behavior and I was grateful for their support. I even made them dinner as a thank you. Her belongings are still on the porch, but I couldn't care less. Tomorrow I'm changing the locks to ensure she can't barge in unexpectedly. She can deal with her things. I'm done with her. On a brighter note, Troy's fiance kicked him out too. She told me she's the leaseholder, so she had every right to do so. It's funny how both cheaters are now homeless together, trying to backtrack and save face. Pathetic, really. That's the latest update from my crazy life. Thanks to everyone for the support and advice. It's been a wild ride, but at least now I can start moving forward without Samantha's toxic presence. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been quite a journey and I'm here with a long overdue update on what's been happening in my life since the last time I shared. To be honest, I had inwardly decided that that would be my last update and I wasn't going to update anymore. But I recently looked back into this Reddit account and I saw that I had been getting a lot of requests and DMs for updates on what happened. So strap in because it's been a whirlwind. The next day I found out that Samantha had taken her belongings from the porch. I checked the cameras and she had come in the night. I still went ahead to change the locks though. I reached out to her acquaintances and even family members trying to find out where she was staying. It turned out she wasn't with any of them and honestly I stopped caring. 
My lawyer started working on the divorce papers, and while Samantha, she continued messaging me, she refused to disclose her current location. She just kept pleading for me to take her back, but I stood my ground. Troy, her affair partner, wasn't an option either as he had moved back in with his parents. His fiancé confirmed this to me. Samantha's refusal to answer my questions about her living situation added to the craziness. I didn't block her because I was following legal advice to keep records of our conversations. Eventually, she was served with the divorce papers and her reaction was explosive. She screamed, cried, and left dramatic voice notes blaming me. It was clear she was struggling and I found out she was staying at a homeless shelter. Moving forward, I focused on myself. With our joint account cleared out and legal proceedings underway, I felt liberated. I didn't even feel lonely, and I didn't even miss her because for a very long time, she had been distant from me and had been more of a roommate than even a spouse. We went to court and the court ruling favored me thanks to the evidence I presented. She expected more but got much less, and her emotional breakdown in court didn't sway me. In fact, it was extremely satisfying to watch. I felt no pity. She had brought this upon herself. After the court session, I cut off contact and blocked her. Life without her improved significantly. I have started rebuilding my relationship with my family and they are happy to have me back. I genuinely cannot believe I let her suppress me for so long. I have also apologized to a lot of my friends and I have been hanging out with them a lot more. The support from everyone was invaluable and I'm grateful for it. I've realized how much she held me back and drained me emotionally. Now I'm happier surrounded by genuine connections and moving forward with my life. It's a fresh start, and I'm embracing it fully. Thanks again to everyone who stood by me through this journey.